Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Fit Neck and Atters. I'm Fatima and I'm the host of this crafting podcast coming to you from Singapore. In the podcast I usually discuss my adventures of, um, about knitting, crochet, some spinning, um, and I'll have a, a few other crafting related things to talk about with you guys today. Um, so for those of you who are new, welcome. Um, I hope you enjoy the episode, um, and for those of you who are returning, thank you guys, and hi! <laughs> um, you can find me as Nitnaka on Instagram and Ravelry, um, and we have a Ravelry group as well called Nitnaka Natas Podcast, so please feel free to pop along and join in the chatter. Today is Thursday the 10th of November, um, I think the general kind of tone around the world was quite a somber one this morning and it's been a hard time for many um, and I just wanted to put out there the message of love, compassion acceptance um, because I, let's be the change that we want to see in this world um, I think there's ample amounts of love and acceptance definitely within the knitting community and I, I just felt I usually podcast um, fortnightly so today was my normal recording day but today more than ever I felt like I really needed to be in touch with my community um, and feel the love and the compassion that comes through that community. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know all of you and I hope that that is a relationship that doesn't change. So moving on, um, we've got some giveaway prizes. Um, so I thought we'd start off on a, a happy note. Um, and bring cheer to everyone. My first ever cowl ended on the 31st of October, which was the to be or not to be cowl. Um, and I have some giveaway prizes today. Um, so there were prizes for both the chatter and the FO thread. And I've done my random uh, number generator thing offline. And we have some winners. Um, so this is very exciting. Let me just check. So, um, for the chatter thread, there were two prizes. There's this skein of yarn, which is kind of falling apart in my hands because I unskeined it. Oh, there we go. Just this gorgeous kind of yellows, buttery yellows, and cream. Um, so a tonal uh, yarn called Acacia Honey and this is by My Yarn Story Company um, and it's one of the colourways that um, I worked with Joan um, to get uh, specifically for the cow. So that's one of the prizes and the other prize um, for the chatter thread are, oh let me get these together these lovely stitch markers. So there's a B, I don't know if you can see that, a B and some daisies. Um, and this is from Michelle, um, from Love by Little Map. Um, and the winner for the chatter thread is Julie Evans. Um, that's Julie from Forsyth. Um, uh, congratulations. Um, PM me your address so that I can send you your prize um, and I'll get it to you as soon as possible. And then the next prize is for the FO thread. So we had um, a few different kind of bee themed um, FOs um, and the winner for the FO thread uh, was Jazzy Java, who is Sue Ann. Um, and she had made the honey hat by Hannah Fettig. Um, I'll see if I can try and insert a picture. If I can't, do go and check out the thread. 
um, and she won, I'm very jealous, this game, how gorgeous is this, called Honeycomb, and it's kind of yellows and oranges and browns and bits of speckles, um, so this is the, uh, a match coveted game, I know Grace had her eye on this game too, um, and so it's this skein of yarn, again from my yarn story company, the same set of stitch markers, and then you also get a bee bag. Um, so exciting. So again, Sue Ann, PM me your address, and I will get these out to you in the post um, soon. Yay. So how exciting is that? Um, my first cow. Um, it was so much fun. Um, I unfortunately did not manage to finish. Um, I finished a day after, um, which was heartbreaking. <laughs> um, but I did manage to finish my project and I'll be showing it to you guys uh, shortly. So yeah. Um, um, at the moment we have an informal charity along um, happening in the group. I had mentioned on my last episode that I was going to be doing some charity knits and I'm just going to, because it's coming up to kind of holiday time and, and winter in the Northern Hemisphere um, and I'm going to be donating my charity knits to a uh, charity called Sufra, which is a food bank um, in northwest London um, and um, I had basically said that I was going to be doing it and if anyone wanted to join in they were more than welcome um, and I've opened up a thread in the group if you are interested um, just pop along um, and jot down the details of the charity that you're going to be supporting or knitting or crocheting for um, and maybe share the objects that um, you guys have knit or crochet um, it'd be really fun uh, to see what you guys are doing what you're gifting away um, and also it's an opportunity for you guys to, to shout out about um, you know charities or projects that are important to you um, and we all we all get to kind of share that with you guys um, so yeah um, that's what I've got going along I'm we're gonna I'm using the hashtag KN Charity along. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to share what you're doing on social media. Okay, um, now on to some knitting and I have FOs, not just one, not just two, but three FOs. So it's a very, very exciting day for me because <laughs> I get to share three things with you. Um, one of them is blocked or rather blocking um, and two of them are unblocked but let's see what I have. So the first is my Hotel of Bees. So this is the crochet um, shawl that I was doing in the Repes Stonewash by Christina Hadering um, and as I'd mentioned it's got different sections um, kind of honeycomb sections, bee sections, flower sections um, it's still damp, it, it, it was blocking, I wanted to try and get the lace sections to open up a bit more. I think I probably need to block it a bit more aggressively. I've still got the last few ends to weave in but I did want to show you guys and I didn't want to show it kind of unblocked. So you've got a semi-blocked shawl. Um, I think the last time that you guys saw it I was probably on this section um, and um, I did the final section in a grey but the funny thing is it actually looks kind of so here it looks grey. When you put it with the rest of the shawl, it kind of looks like a bluey grey, which it's not at all. Um, 
so quite interesting. I have a question, guys. So, how on earth am I supposed to wear the shawl? Because it's kind of, I feel like it's not wide enough here. Or maybe it's just too asymmetrical. I'm not sure. Um, but I was struggling to, to put it on. So if anyone has any wise ideas on how to wear it, please let me know. Um, this was crocheted with a three millimeter hook. Um, and Jepez is um, and stonewashed is a, um, an acrylic and a wool blend. Um, quite nice to work with when you're crocheting. I have no idea what it's like um, when you knit with it. So my next one um, is unblocked and it's the thistle hat. Um, pop out the nubs here um, and this was a test knit that I did um, for Katie Trico um, you can check out the details on my Ravelry page and this is in the toddler size um, I'm going to insert a picture of my son wearing it I know it's not a boy's hat um, but obviously I have a boy not a girl <coughs> Um, and it's basically worked an Aran weight. I used um, Drops Alaska, which is 100% wool. Um, and the pattern comes in both sport weight and Aran weight. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it's either just been released or it's about to be released. Um, and it's quite straightforward. Um, the most difficult part for me was to do the nubs because with kind of thicker weight, um, yarn um, and, and the needles I found the nubs a little bit challenging to do but other than that it's quite straightforward um, and quite fun and quite pretty and actually when she releases the pattern it's going to be a hat and a cowl set um, so you can get the set done this is one of the projects that I'm going to be uh, donating um, to suffer up to the food bank so yeah there it is. I should tell you what the colourway is and I've forgotten. Um, but it's basically, if you can see, it's like a, a, a brownie grey. It comes up as being grey in this light. Not sure why. Um, but it's a brownie grey. Um, it's used about 80 metres of yarn, um, about 58 grams. Um, yeah. And it was relatively fast to do. So that was uh, whip number two, um, sorry, FO number two. Um, and then the third one I finished just this morning. Um, actually, I cast it on yesterday. Um, and um, when I was watching the election results coming in, um, there was a lot of stress knitting done. Um, and I don't know if it was because of how I was knitting or just the type of yarn. Um, I was getting shoulder ache and finger ache and all sorts of um, stuff. So anyway, what did I knit? I knit the slush hat. I think it's a slush hat. Um, by Alison O'Mahony, who is a Canadian designer. Um, and it's basically kind of um, ribbing and then a textured pattern um, just using kind of knit, knit pearls. Um, this is the, the medium to large size. This is the size that she wanted me to test knit. Uh, she already had someone for the smaller sizes. I've done this, um, it's a super, it uses a super bulky kind of weight yarn and I had some Stylecraft Tibet um, in my stash which I used, which is 72% wool, 20% uh, acrylic and 5% nylon. And it's kind of a slubby yarn. I don't know if you can really, you can tell for sure. So it kind of is, it's thick and thin in different places. And, and I think um, I've, I've used 
almost two skeins of this. I mean, I was just short of two crowns in the second skein. Um, and I almost feel like the first ball was less slubby than the second ball. Um, and it's supposed to have a pom-pom, but I don't have any foam for pom-poms. So um, at the moment, there is no pom-pom um, on this. This is also going to be going um, to Sephora. So I, I'm really happy that I have two kind of projects uh, to, to give for the charity along already. Um, this was super quick to knit. Uh, I want to say maybe it took me like two hours to do. Um, it doesn't use very much yarn. Um, I was 98 grams. Um, it's done on, not, this one was this size, it's done on 9mm needles. Um, it should be coming out next week if I'm not mistaken. So watch out for it. Um, it looks super, super, super cute um, with the pom-pom. I mean, I can show it to you, but I'm not really a hat person. And it's so big for me. Um, so it's like super, super slouchy. Um, yeah, hats don't really suit me. Um, but as much as I think hats are very cute, uh, it's a no-go for me. Um, but it was really fast, it was really fun, it's very, very simple, so again, um, it's one to look out for, and it's a, it's a quick knit, quick gift knit, um, and it feels really lovely and warm. So yeah, that was my third FO. Um, I was quite lucky in those two test knits, um, I had deadlines to, to stick to, um, and also they weren't you know, they weren't too complicated so they didn't take that long and they were kind of heavier weight yarns um, and hence I managed to get them done. Uh, no promises for having lots of um, FOs next time round. So whips wise, I actually don't have much that I've been working on that you haven't seen already. Um, I got a tiny, tiny amount of work done on my um, candy jar cobblestones. So last time round I was kind of just before the heel and I did the heel and I started on the foot. Um, I did the heel in the pattern, which is like a German short row heel. Um, unfortunately, I've got holes in mine. Um, side looks worse, I'm not 100% sure. So this is the cobblestone um, pattern by Mina Phillip. Um, and it was a really simple heel to do. Um, and I think in it she kind of says to pull the yarn quite tight when you're doing something or the other, I can't remember what now. Um, so I, I'm not sure why I have holes. Um, but for those of you who've done the heel, tried the heel, um, can you let me know how I, might, how I might be able to overcome this? I'm hoping that my second sock heel is better. It was really, I, I found it even quicker than the fish lips kit heel. Um, so it was really good. And the fit is absolutely fine. It's just that it's a little bit holy. Um, and I did actually, so I should say that um, I started this casting on uh, 60 stitches and I think she has two sizes, a 56 and a 64 and I, I did a 60 because that seems to be what works for me at the top. Um, and then I decreased down to I want to say I'm thinking maybe I didn't decrease down to 56 you know maybe I only decreased down to 58 maybe that's why I've got the holes hmm. I'm 
I'm going to have to pay attention to it next time round. But I did decrease down. I thought I decreased down to 56, but I have a feeling I didn't because I think I just knit two together and did an SSK on one side. Hmm. So it might be for that reason. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I mean, you can tell better here. Look, it's definitely hauling. So for those of you who've done the heel um, and who know how I might be able to overcome this, please do let me know. I um, decided just to follow on with the yarn that I was using. So it was coming up to the blue, which was the end of the heel. I then, the next, that, that I hadn't used equal amounts of the blue and the pink in the heel, so I knew that the blue would be coming through at the front and it would be a shorter stripe, and I didn't really want that. So what I did was wound off a, a whole colour repeat and started backwards. Um, so I started the purple at the end of the repeat from where I'd started, so I kind of went backwards, so I'm doing green, yellow, blue, sorry, green, yellow, blue, um, towards the pink. Um, I thought it was quite interesting. But yeah, I've not, uh, I mean, I've only managed to do that much, really. Um, so, I have been doing more knitting, um, but I've kind of been doing some designing. And I know that on my previous podcast that said, never going to design, it's not in me, I'm, it's just not what I'm into. And I don't really see myself that way at all. But um, if you remember last time, I'd mentioned that I had um, knit up a man cozy um, because Tiffany of Knitting from the Mitten is doing a cozy along. And um, I just felt like I could possibly knit up some um, and in Singapore at least um, towards the holiday season they tend to have handicraft um, fairs um, and I thought it you know I don't really do knitting commissions or very rarely do knitting commissions and I don't knit for money per se because you can't put a price on your knitting really um, but I just thought it might be it was something short um, small and quick and easy to do um, and might be something that other people wanted to buy around Christmas time uh, around um, the holiday season as gifts um, so there's small gifts there cute gifts to give away um, and when you're doing when you're knitting in exchange for money, I'm, I'm always a little bit wary of what I'm allowed to knit or crochet. Um, you know, is it a case of, I, I think some designers kind of think, you know, feel free to um, knit or crochet the product and, and sell it, that's absolutely fine. And some people don't say anything and some people say no. Um, and I just thought the easiest way around that whole situation was probably to um, create my own pattern um, and it wasn't supposed to be a I want to design um, moment at all um, but it kind of turned into into that um, I have two project design projects on the go um, and one of them is more, one of them's a garment, and one of them is more a stitch pattern that I'm kind of creating, um, and then what I do with that stitch pattern I'm not 100% sure yet, um, no bright ideas as yet, um, so yeah, it's, um, exciting I <laughs> I'm kind of treading um, water at the moment because it's such a new place for me I'm not a natural designer I don't think I, I can I have ideas I don't always know how to execute them so this 
has been quite interesting because it means that I've had to do a lot of reading, um, I'm doing research, I'm kind of calculating things, and it's actually um, quite useful in terms of my tech design side of things. So as I, ha again, I've been mentioning recently, I've kind of did a course in tech editing, um, and that's a line that I want to be pursuing. It's something that I can do from home whilst I'm looking after my son at the moment, um, and I'm not going out to work. Um, it's knitting related, um, and I enjoy it. Um, and so that's kind of an avenue that I've been um, pursuing. And, and actually this whole design process is quite useful because I think I'm learning um, a lot through doing or, or creating a design too. Um, so yeah, it kind of ties in, it's exciting, it's a little bit scary. I have absolutely no idea if it will amount to anything other than me making something for someone close to me, um, but watch this space. I'd like, at least for the garment, to be able to write up a pattern um, and publish it. But, um, I have so many ideas in my head at the moment, not necessarily not to do with designing, but just generally what I want to be doing with my life. And I think I sometimes go a little bit crazy and take on a bit too much. Um, so. I'm kind of having to decide what it is exactly that I want to do and what I want to focus my time and energy on uh, because I have a, a son that I look after at home, I have started a new business, I am um, studying and I'm hoping to go back to work as well come the new year. Um, so it's all kind of going. Um, yeah, watch this space. I am. Um, I've got one project in here. I think this is. Actually, I'm not going to tell you which is what. Um, one project in here, um, which is a Mina Phillip bag, and one project in here. And this bag is from um, Marsha. A very little. I, I got it from her, and it's really cute fabric. It's kind of sewing related. Um, and again, this is another crafting thing that I would love to be able to do. Um, I think there are amazing sewists out there and it's always been a skill that I've wanted to learn. I have a sewing machine, I just need to learn how to use them. Um, so yeah, so my two design things are in here. Um, yeah, moving on to other crafty stuff. Um, so I um, mentioned um, going into tech editing and um, my husband encouraged me to kind of set it up as a business um, and uh, create a brand name and, and things like that so I've been working on that for the last coming up to a month now um, and shortly after my last podcast um, I set up well published my website um, which is called Netnacker Crafts um, and that's my company name uh, Netnacker Crafts and it's netnackercrafts.com um, and there's just a short blurb about who I am what I do and um, some information on uh, tech editing for those of you out there who um, are looking for a tech editor um, so that was quite exciting um, it, it again is, is new territory for me um, but I'm enjoying the ride so far um, so besides that the other kind of crafty stuff that I've been doing is um, looking at the use of essential oils um, and the like in um, beauty products um, and I've been experimenting making lip balms and that kind of was um, something that I did thanks to, to Marsha again from Very Little because I think on one of her podcasts 
quite a few episodes back, um, she was talking about how she makes her own lip balm at home. Um, her husband keeps these and she uses beeswax to, to make lip balm. Um, so I kind of had a bit of a spark of an idea from there and I started kind of looking into it at that point. But raw material here in Singapore is is not easy to come by and it's quite expensive so it kind of got put on hold um, for a while. Um, but I've been researching it and researching kind of what different oils do and which oils are good for your skin and why um, and essential oils um, as well so I've been doing quite a bit of experimenting especially over the last week um, and the other th thing I've been uh, working on is massage bars um, so Far East Asia um, people are, are very much into things like um, different types of styles of massage, um, acupuncture, um, into kind of reflexology and there's a whole wealth of information out there um, on the benefits of different kind of local grown spices and oils um, that people have been using for ages and ages and I, I've really been trying to kind of look into those. Um, I thought I'd kind of start off simple and um, looked up a few kind of recipes online, um, got all the ingredients mixed up, um, really liked the end product as it came out, but it's very hot in Singapore as you all know, and my massage bar wasn't really holding it up. Um, so, um, I'm throwing a henna party for my sister-in-law next month and I thought I could make some massage bars as favours. Um, and they're fine sitting there but the moment you touch them they kind of start to, to disintegrate and melt and I wasn't sure how that would work with regards to packaging and stuff. So I think it's back to the drawing board <laughs> uh, with regards to recipes but it's been really exciting um, and it's so interesting to learn um, about that side of things so yeah that's something else that I've been doing um, trying to think if there's anything else um, crafty that I've been doing I don't think so let's move on to some mail um, so as you all know, at 1,000 grams, I have tallied up how much I've done so far. It's a very abysmal 300 and something, almost 400 grams. So I've got quite a fair bit, or far bit to go. Um, and so my purchases have not really been, well, my purchases haven't been yarn. Um, but like I'd mentioned last time, I was saving up um, some stuff to show you. And I've been a, on a bit of a bag buying mission, um, but I can't resist because I love project bags, and there are such cute ones out there, um, and I've been easily tempted. Um, I should show you that um, I, I do have some yarn, which is came a long while back. Um, and I just haven't gotten around to showing you guys. Let me start off with that and then I'll show you the bags. So look at this skein here. It's so super cute. I love, love these colors. It's fuchsia, teal green, some beige. Um, it's really lovely and it's from Ethel, Fib Ethel Fibers. Oops, here we go. Um, and it's really soft um, and this is a 70-20-10 so 70% merino 20% yak which I've never ever felt or worked with before um, and 10% nylon um, and I think it's called Enchanted it was from her Halloween series um, one of the things I love um, I love getting when I 
um, order things from Etsy or from other small businesses is kind of messages. A lot, a lot of um, sellers kind of send you messages, um, and a fair few more recently have been really excited to be selling or sending things to Singapore. Um, and um, I love that. I love that you can make something and it can go halfway across the world, and someone will treasure it um, just as much as you when you made it. So. Um, I, I love that and I love that it makes you guys excited too <laughs> that um, you're managing well you're, you're, you're sending your stuff all the way to a different part of the world um, I think it's really important to build connections and bridges um, and it's exciting for me because uh, we don't have as many kind of makers and designers here so um, it's nice to be able to support people that are kind of in the business um, so yeah, so this was my, this is going to be my first yak. Um, I've just realised there's also some purple in here, which makes it even more special to me. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then my bags. So you've seen the one by um, Very Little Marsha. Nice. These are still in plastic. Can you see? Um, so many people, so many uh, podcasters have been showing off their stitching new bags um, and I was very, very tempted um, by so many of her Rihanna's beautiful designs um, and I managed to get my hands on this box one um, for the winter season, which I thought was super cute. and. I got a matching belt. Um, so I was really, really excited about this, and she was lovely to kind of work with. She sent me a mini too. How cute is this? I'm not really sure what to do with my minis at the moment. I have, I've had the occasional, sorry, but a bit of stuff fluttering away. I have a few minis that people have given me um, when I've bought things and I did start um, a cozy memory blanket but I have like one and a half squares um, I probably should add to it um, I think a lot of people are kind of taking out their cozy memory memories blankets or at least I've seen a lot more cozy memories being mentioned on podcasts more recently I think because we're getting into the colder months um, in some places um, and I think maybe I should I should dig that out and add to it. Um, I, I think I'm just a little bit worried that I don't have that many uh, minis um, and I don't knit that many socks, um, although I have tons of sock yarn. <laughs> so I don't have lots of spare bits um, to add to the blanket. And I think that's probably why I um, put it on hold. Um, I bought some minis, um, I think from Nora George if I'm not mistaken, um, to add to the blanket. Let's see, I'm, I'm going to dig it out um, now that I've talked about it um, and let's see if I can do something. Getting back to stitching in you, Rihanna was so, so super sweet. Um, when I was chatting to her on Instagram, she even said to me, oh there's this discount code, why don't you use it? Um, and I asked her if it was a discount code that I could share with you guys. Um, and she actually created one for us. Um, it's Stitch in 15 and you get 15% off um, off your purchases with her. I'm gonna put the details below. Do check out her stuff um, and do follow her on Instagram too because she always has new fabrics and new stuff coming out. Um, and some super, super cute stuff. I love um, I love this bag. I forgot to show you that there's a progress creeper on here. Um, I didn't want to use it until I'd shown it to you guys. A snowflake. There we go. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you more about the bag once I've got a project in it. And I'm sure there's a project lying around to be put in it. Um, and then the other one. Um, it's a love sock wool bag. 
I have always, always, always wanted a Love Silk Cool bag. Um, and that's Sarah. Um, Love Silk Cool podcast. Um, and I fin finally managed to get my hands on one of her bags. Um, it, it's, it's got the kind of amount of interfacing that I love. And this print is actually one of her Jane Eyre prints. And I love Jane Eyre. Um, and look at this cute strap. And look at this. I love this. This is super cute too. Um, and she sent some stuff with it too. Oh, I think Rihanna did too. Hang on. <laughs> um, some maple apple cider tea. And some cinnamon apple chamomile caffeine free tea. Um, and with Sarah's, I got another mini. Again, I've not taken it out. Some candy. Um, and some chai tea. So, uh, yeah. Those are my purchases. Um, I don't think I have anything outstanding or anything I'm waiting for, so it might be a dry spell for the next few episodes, but that's that's fine. I need to be making money, not spending it all the time. Um, and I have plenty of things to be doing. So yeah, um, a slightly shorter episode than normal, um, but really I wanted to get an episode out today because I had some FOs to show you, which I was quite excited about, and I wanted just a to put some love back out into the world. Um, I love having this opportunity to, to chat to you guys, to share my knitting and my crafting with you guys. Um, and I really do believe that we should be the change that we want to see in the world. Um, and if we love one another um, and have compassion, we can overcome anything. Um, so I'm going to leave you with those thoughts. Um, happy knitting and happy crafting everyone. Take care.